Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Me on a Mondays. Today we are going to be replacing the master cylinder, the slave cylinder, and the entire clutch line with a flexible stainless steel hose. Um, got all these parts from Goodwin Racing, pretty good deal. All came in a kit, also came with some high temperature brake fluid, hydro hydraulic fluid, same thing. Um, so we're doing that today, and I'll get the car lifted up, and we'll get started. All right, guys, once you get your car lifted off the ground, get it on some sturdy jack stands. Put a chalk block, a piece of wood behind your rear wheels. Make sure it's sturdy. Also, you can use your jack as a safety or a secondary safety just in case something happens to go wrong with the jack stands. Definitely give the car a good shake. Make sure it's sturdy. Now we're going to remove the right front wheel after we've loosened the lug nuts before we lifted it up um, to be able to access the slave cylinder. All right, so here is my slave cylinder, um, and you can see the line going up here. And we'll go ahead and check that up top. So the line comes up here, actually right here, follows along this path, and this is it here. Wraps around, and here is our master cylinder. So, see that my fluid is extremely filthy. Pretty sure my lines are pretty terrible too. Is you definitely want to have a towel or an old shirt put on the side of your fender here. When you take off your master cylinder, it's more than likely going to leak. And if you get that on the paint, it's going to ruin the paint unless you can clean it up instantly and with some good cleaner. So it's just good to go ahead and be safe and have a protective rag, towel, shirt, whatever. Have some other stuff too. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the lid off. We're going to take this off to help unpressurize the system. You're gonna get a helper that I have right here, hey hey. So as we are down here, we're gonna disconnect this piece and let all the fluid drain out into this bottle and funnel I have down here. Making a bit of a mess under here. Oh shit. Drop the camera. Okay. All right, uh, pump it sl slowly. Yeah, just keep, no, keep in and out, in and out. Slowly. It's working. Keep going. There we go, now we're cooking. Fluid now. Hang on a sec. Okay, push it in hard one time. One more time. All right, that's all she wrote. All right, so we have cleared the fluid out of the system. Now it's time to disassemble it, take it apart, <laughs> and and put it back. Put the new one on. So just to show you guys, my fluid was absolutely filthy. All right, now we're gonna disconnect the line up here. Not a lot of room to work with. So once you get this disconnected, you're going to want to pop this loose off of here. You can just lift up on the back and slide it out, or you can use a flathead screwdriver and pop it out. And there's another one right here as well. Now since we're not using this line again, we can bend it in uh, any direction we need to to get it out. It's going to be kind of a pain as we got to pull it out from underneath, but we're disconnected on both ends, so we're going to get that done. Almost forgot, we're also connected here. So this is the hard line, then we go to a rubber line which goes all the way down here. If you can see where I'm pointing, this is where it turns back to a hard line again. So we're going to we're going to remove this entire entire line connections, the soft, the hard lines. All of that's going to be able to come out. Disconnected myself from the hard line here, or from the soft line. I've got the first hard line disconnected. So I'm going to pull it out in this direction. 
kind of trying to bend it, wiggle it, to make sure not to damage any other lines in the process. Wire. It's going to get caught on a lot of things, so just be careful, don't rip it out. There we go. So this piece here goes down towards the slave cylinder, and we have this weird wiry line. Now this was mounted somewhere, and so is this, but on my car for some reason it's just hanging loose, no idea why. So I um, had a zip tie here, and had a zip tie hanging around also the bottom port of this mount, so I just cut those off, pulled it right out. So now we just need to take the slave cylinder, master cylinder out, and uh, start getting the new stuff ready. All right, so here is back at the master cylinder. I did not use any rust penetrating spray or anything on these. They are actually um, easy to come off. Pulling the last bolt off now. Okay, this is where you want to be careful. Make sure you have that rag here so you don't get any brake fluid on your car because it will spill out. Just so you guys know too, um, all of the stock uh, clutch line nuts are a 10 millimeter and all of the bolts for the master cylinder the two and the two bolts on the slave cylinder are 12 millimeter so the top one I can get probably with a ratchet the bottom one I'm probably gonna have to go with a ratchet. Alright guys here's the old stuff versus the new stuff um, as you can see the nipple here is a little bit longer than the new one here which is actually good and the long end is deep in there where it's a little more shallow in there um, the shallow one, it goes down in there and like shoves it all out, which it's been trying to do. So if you have any chirping noises that sound like crickets, it's actually very likely it's this. I've had to re -lube this one up about three times since I've had it. And um, a lot of people think it's a throwout bearing or some other bigger issue. Sometimes just double check this to make sure it's looped up. So again, here's the lines. Hard line, soft line, short hard line. All going to be replaced by one stainless steel line. Alright, so we're going to fill this about to the max line maybe a little bit more just a little bit and the reason for that is because once you uh, hook the lines up and you start bleeding the system it's going to pull more fluid out of it to go actually through the lines so you'll end up having less so you want to double check that top it off make sure you aren't running out or you'll actually get air in the system and you have to start all over again one other thing that i've seen that you need to do once you fill it up put the cap on it take a uh, a long phillips head screwdriver Punch it in there. I think we just saw some saw some fluid shoot out straight past my head. There we go. So I've gotten rid of all the air that's in here and allowed for the fluid to come down inside the chamber. So once we start trying to pressurize the system, remove the air out of all the lines, we'll have uh, no issues inside here. It'll be ready to go. If you get a, uh, a line like this, one's larger than the other, or there's different sizes. So what we're looking at here is this one is going to go to the master cylinder. This one is going to go to the slave cylinder. It's got a bit of a longer neck here. So slave cylinder, master cylinder. All right, guys. So I uh, hooked it up here to the master cylinder before I even reattached it to the car, which made it a lot easier. Didn't have to fiddle around with uh, very little room at all. So um, hooked it back up. Got the fluid in here still. The lines actually surprisingly fit back inside the clip here. And this one was able to close. However, this one... I got through there, it's not completely closing all the way, but uh, this seems to hold it really tight right there, so it's actually good to go. I slipped it back through this line, where the uh, hard line turned into the soft, to just kind of um, keep, keep a good hold of it. It's just like the uh, master cylinder, I went ahead and attached the uh, line while it's off, just because it makes it a lot easier to do so. Um, but now we're go ahead. We're ready to attach it to the transmission and start bleeding the uh, system. All right, there we go. We are all hooked up and ready to go. All right, so we're ready to bleed the system. Eh, put the cap on too tight. We're gonna take the cap off to make sure it's not pressurized. So when we do bleed, 
the fluid will be able to come out and I'm going to add a little bit more because it looks like some of it already went through the hose. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to bleed the system. Got uh, some help from my wonderful wife over here. So she's going to push the clutch in. I'm going to open the bleeder valve. I'm going to close the bleeder valve. Then she's going to release the clutch and we'll do that several times until I have no air in the system. And you want to keep an eye on your uh, your master cylinder to make sure the fluid doesn't go all the way out. You don't want to run out. You need to top it off. Otherwise, you're going to pull air back into your system, and you're going to start all over again. So let's we'll start bleeding. All right. So the system is bled, and we are actually good to go. Um, one thing I did forget. I want to tell you guys. This piece right here was completely loose and shooting fluid out the top. So I've got a little puddle down here. But the whole time I was trying to bleed it, it was shooting out fluid at the top. <laughs> I didn't know that. So. Um, it wasn't letting air necessarily back in, but it also wasn't keeping uh, the system pressurized. So once I tightened this up, um, I bled it two more times, opened and closed it twice, and uh, now my system is tight and good to go. Fixed the issue I was having. Um, basically, I'd put my foot down on the clutch like this. I would hold it there for about five seconds. Let's say I'm in first and I'm in traffic or I'm reversing out of a parking lot, and I'd put it in gear. I'd completely start losing pressure. My clutch would start engaging while my foot is still down and uh, it would get locked in gear. I'd have to like slam it out of the clutch, try to, um, to release it to be able to get out of gear. So it increased my clutch pedal feel and, and being able to shift and go in and out, um, pretty much return it to stock. I mean like 100%. I was losing pressure last time, so this is a big change. So definitely a big success here. Again, I got the parts from Goodwin Racing. Uh, I, I wanna say it was close to $100, um, not including shipping, uh, but um, Parts are definitely very good and fix the issue else happens. Like and subscribe below if you like what you saw. If you'd like to see anything different or you have any uh, requests, definitely put those down there. And if you have any questions, definitely hit me up. Thanks for watching.